Hello and welcome back to the Tin Barn. I'm Pragmatic Lee and in today's video we're going to make a another fixture plate. Uh, as you saw in last week's video we made these uh, feet uh, for these Desteco uh, toggle clamps. Today I want to take this piece of 40 inch by about 90 inch half inch thick aluminum plate and make a fixture plate. Now I've got several fixture plates I've already made up. Uh, here's a small one. Uh, it has this uh, pivot to mount in the uh, mill vise. I have a larger rectangular one. It also has a round pivot that happens to be off right now to set it in the uh, mill vise. I have a round one that goes on my rotary uh, table. All these are somewhat sacrificial. So far I've managed to only cut just a little bit into this round one. But the reason I can't use these for the uh, uh, toggle clamps, all the holes in all my existing uh, fixture plates are on three quarter inch uh, square. These clamps are a three quarter inch front to back, but an inch and a quarter side to side. So I've got a, a little layout made. The first set of yellow holes up here will go all the way across each row of holes being three quarters of an inch apart and on the x-axis on the y-axis being an inch and a quarter. The bottom of this piece will be same setup. Now the orange dots after I get the the two sets which will make four rows of the orange or I'm sorry of the yellow holes I'll look at whether or not I want to put this set of orange holes in there. That would be for a single clamp down the middle. But for right now, let's go over to the mill. You know, I got to thinking about when I was getting ready to put this video together. My last eight videos have been on the lathe. Poor mill has been left out. Now, we're not going to be doing a whole lot of milling today on the milling machine. It'll be primarily drilling and tapping, but at least the machine will get some use. So let's turn over there now. Okay, the first thing we want to do is find this corner right here. Now I have already milled this off, got a, a good clean edge over here. This other end down here I'm kind of letting run wild a little bit. It's, it's a little over our total 90 inches that the piece will be. Actually it's 9.4 I think. I'm sorry, 9.04, I believe is what it figured out to be. It's a little bit old, longer right now. After we get everything done and cleaned up, we'll come down and mill this in, make it clean, so that it's the, same, the holes are the same distance on each side. Just a little OCD there. The first thing let's do is find this edge right here. All right, that kicked off right there. I'll set my uh, zero out my x-axis. Now I'm going to come off of it and do that again just to be sure that repeats. And it did within a half a thousandth anyhow. So let's come over here now and find this back edge. Y zero. Be sure that repeats, and it did. So what we have now is zero, zero on this point right here. Our first hole needs to be 400 thousandths from the end. And 250 thousandths from that edge, back edge. So that's going to be our new zero right there. Everything is going to be 
based on this first hole right here. Now, I'm going to drill this hole and step over three quarters of an inch all the way to eight and a quarter. Then I'll come down from zero here, uh, 1.25 inches, and do the same thing there. But what I'm going to do on each row, I got the DRO, so there shouldn't be any issue of repeating. But what I'm going to do is drill a row, then I'll come back and countersink that row, and then I'll tap that row. After we get those three steps done on a row, we'll move over and find our starting position for the next row. Okay, did y'all catch that? I almost messed up there, but I noticed when I put the drill bit in that it was very close to that edge right there, and there was supposed to be some clearance off this edge. What I did was simply forgot to account for the, uh, the diameter of my center or edge finding probe. I think all of y'all are familiar with that, so I'm not going to go back through it, but basically it was meant that I needed to step over another hundred thousandths uh, in each direction or back off a hundred thousandths in each direction to take care of half the diameter of the probe. All right, so I'm going to get my y-axis and lock it down snug to zero axis it's set at zero now zero zero right here all right now let's move over three quarters of an inch a little wd-40 on that drill bit that should hopefully keep this gummy aluminum from sticking to it so bad Alright, I'm going to keep moving down. I'll bring you back when we're ready for the next step uh, on this series of holes. Oh, and I will say each hole is, I'm stepping over not just 75,000, 750,000 from the previous hole. I'm actually incrementing each time. So if I'm a few thousandths off on each one, it will not accumulate. Each hole basically uh, resets my starting point. Okay, I just finished drilling the first row of holes. So let's remove our bit right quick and put this countersink in. I'm going to try this one. I'm not real fond of this type of countersinks, but we'll give it a try and see what it does. And all I'm looking to do is just make a little lead in with a tap. Alright, let's back up. That's putting a good countersink in there. It's rolling up just a little bit of an edge that we'll have to clean up afterwards. I'm going to proceed through this. I'll bring it back when we get ready to tap this row. Okay, now I've got this first row countersink. Well, Put our two flute spiral tap in and we'll reduce our speed to the slowest this mill will go which is 115 rpm and even though this is aluminum I like to use a little uh, cut or tapping oil tap magic on the taps as we're tapping. So, And we'll do our thing again by advancing three quarters of an inch between each hole. And I got to get that tap tight in there, don't it? It's going to keep slipping like that. Every time it slips, that's a little bit more wear on the, on the chuck jaws. All right, just like before, I'll bring you back when we get ready to step over a row. Okay, I think our first row is finished now. We've drilled it, tapped it, drilled it, countersunk it, and tapped it. 
Now we're ready to move over. And remember I said this is an inch and a quarter across this space. So on the y-axis, we'll move in 1.250 and lock our y-axis down right there. And again, I'll simply drill three quarters of an inch distance between each one and then do the same process. I'll bring you back when we get ready to lay out the set that will be on this side. Okay, we've got our first set of holes done, two rows, and our clamps will attach down to any of these along this row. Now what I would like to do is simply come over here, get this where we can see what's going on, but move over the inch and a quarter and put a row of holes here and then move over but run out of space. My workpiece is not wide enough uh, for the two inner, inner rows to mate up. So what we're going to do is move over here, find this edge, just like we found that back edge, move in our quarter of an inch, do a set of holes there, move over an inch and a quarter and do a set of holes. And this set of holes here and that will be a, a bit too, well, almost a quarter inch too close together to work. <clears throat> That's where we'll go back and look at those orange dots that I showed you before. But I'm leaning against that right now because, I don't know, I don't want to weaken this any more than, uh, any more than is necessary. So let's come back over here now. Now let's find this edge again, or find this opposite edge. Alright, I'll set Y zero here. I'll come back and test, do it again just to be sure. And that was in three tenths of a thousandth. So now let's come over to the hundred thousandths. That's half the width of the probe. I'll zero out the Y again just for clarity. Now come in 250. And I will lock down the Y right there and zero it out. We're still on the same X because this hasn't changed. And just like before, We'll drill a row, countersink a row, then tap the row, move over an inch and a quarter. We'll be at this end, come back, and that should be finished. The only thing to be left is some deburring on the top. In the short rows now. There's 48 holes drilled and tapped. I think the next thing we need to do is move down here to this end and mill that off uh, so that the distance between the last hole and the edge is uniform. Let me uh, decipher some measurements and I'll bring you right back. Okay, I've got all 48 holes drilled and tapped. Uh, like I said earlier, I've got some cleanup I've got to do, uh, but I'm clean up on these burrs, on not only the top, but some bad burrs under the bottom. But I'm going to wait until I get this out of the vise and carry it through the, uh, the parts washer and clean off some of this cutting oil and WD-40 and etc. What I want to do right now, though, is down here at this end, I want the same distance from the center of this last hole to the edge. If you recall over here, we stepped in 0.4. So I want from the center of this hole, 0.4 to the outside. I cut this piece a little bit long. Uh, I cut it about nine and a quarter 
and we're going to see here in just a second how we can easily determine what the overall length needed to be. We know we want a point four on this end and a point four on that end. There's 12 holes in here, so that means there's 11 three quarter inch spaces in between each one. So let me turn the camera right up right quick to a little program that I've mentioned before that I've got running on a touch screen and it's actually mounted on the wall. Back you out just a little bit. This is the mill right here. If I swing all the way around, there's the lathe. Now in between those, I've got this little program running on a 10 inch uh, touch screen with a Raspberry Pi as the computer. Let me get the camera set up a little bit better and I'm going to show you how we use one of the applets uh, in this program. Alright, there's six applets in this program that I'm just calling Machinist Utilities or Machinist Applets. The first one up here is a metric to imperial converter, decimal to fraction converter, a compound travel. Uh, you select an imperial ter uh, threads per inch or metric pitch and it'll tell you how much your tr compounds you travel. Bow hole circle, taper calculator, and there's on screen keyboard to go with those five applets. The sixth applet up here is a little equation solver. Alright, a an equation solver is a little bit different than just a calculator in that you can uh, specify an equation by putting parentheses in part of it and we know that the hierarchy or the order of execution is 0.4 from the center of the first hole to the left edge. We want that 0.4 on both ends so we can add that together in our head and come up with 0.8. Now we want to add to that plus open a set of parens it's 0.75 0.75 between each hole and we said there was 11 spaces between the 12 holes so 0.75 times 11 close our parentheses so what we have is 0.8 plus 0.75 times 11 that says our overall length should be 9.05 so that's what we're going to mill our workpiece to okay I took my 12 inch uh, calipers and laid out 9.05 inches and just put a witness mark down here on this end just a little scratch mark so what we'll do now lower our end mill and we'll simply mill this off to length I'll take a couple cleanup passes then get a measurement and see how much we need to go All right, I'm going to zero out the DRO right there on the x-axis. We'll take our calipers. 9.225. Okay, we could turn back over there to the calculator if we wanted to, but I think we can do this math in our head. 9.225 minus 9.05 is 175 thousandths that we want to take off. So I've zeroed out the x, and I'm just going to keep working on this, taking 100 till we got it down that 175 thousandths. I'll bring you back then when, well actually what I'm going to do after I take this down, I'm going to take this out of the vise, carry it to the parts washer, clean it up good, and then we'll, we'll look at deburring it. All right, I got our workpiece washed off now, cleaned up a little bit. These little burrs on the top, I think I can take care of them with my little Noga tool here. I'll need to clean off all of them. But on the bottom side, man do we have some burrs. Look at that. This is some kind of 
soft aluminum, gum, gummy aluminum. So we're going to have to do something a little bit different on that. We'll get these cleaned off up first. Okay, I got the top side deburred pretty good. I need to go back over it, probably maybe even stone that, just to get any little ridges that's left off. But I'm over here at my old Power King 610 drill press out of the, the late 40s, maybe possibly even early 50s. But I've got a, a countersink in here now. It's a little bit big, but we're going to try it in these quarter inch holes. Try cleaning up this bottom. Alright, that countersink uh, is a bit big. I'm going to try something. It's got a little bit more of a point to it. Alright, I'm going to continue this process across all 48 holes. Meet you back over at the uh, workbench for a quick recap. Okay, I think we're finished up now with this fixture plate. I've got enough holes in it that I can move this up in three quarter inch increments either direction. can turn them around. If I got a piece I need to hold right here at the edge so it hangs out where the bandsaw could get hold of it. You guys have got fixture plates so you, you know how useful they can be around the shop. Hope you got a little bit out of this. Uh, in addition to the three quarter inch spacing on that, these clamps themselves, if you notice this, this foot is pulled back as far back as it'll go near the handle, and this is about as far away as it'll go. And that's anywhere from an inch and a quarter, inch and three eighths additional adjustment there. Now let's talk just a little bit about programs. Okay, first off I want to apologize if I gave some of you the wrong impression in last week's video. In that video, uh, where we were making the, uh, the feet for these clamps, uh, I showed you a little program uh, called uh, Tool Locator. And I mentioned that if you were interested in it, interested in that program and some of the other ones I'd written, to leave me a comment on it. I did not mean to imply that if you were interested in it, just let me know and I'll give you a copy of it. Uh, I had, as I've mentioned before, I had came, had a uh, uh, case of COVID between Christmas and New Year's and did a little bit of the previous videos during the month of January. Thankfully, I had most of them, uh, that, the threading series, I had them uh, made up in advance and already scheduled to, to go live on certain dates uh, on YouTube. I did record a couple of videos uh, during the month of January. Uh, it's March the 1st now when I'm recording this and I don't think I recorded hardly anything during February. Maybe just a little bit of, of stuff. I spent just about the entire month of February out here in the tin barn, I usually spend anywhere from uh, seven, six to seven hours a day, Monday through Saturday, out here in the tin barn. And I spent that time sitting at the computer writing programs. And folks, I just can't give that stuff away. Uh, several reasons. Number one, I got a whole lot of work involved in it. And number two, I don't have the infrastructure, a website or anything like that to facilitate you going to it and downloading the program. I might one day. Uh, I've been programming for 35 years now and never got into writing web pages. I just, that was just not my thing. So if I have a web page, it'll be something that I have to have some help uh, creating. But I wrote these programs just because I, well, I wanted them. I was constantly going to the internet to find these various applets to calculate tapers, uh, uh, going to my handheld calculators, uh, doing uh, various math functions and that kind of thing. So I just decided I would sit down at the computer and write some programs. Now I know in some of the comments in last week's video, 
Some of you guys were joking when you say, well, I sure need that program to get organized in my shop. I understand that, but I did, again, I did not mean to imply all, that all you had to do was ask and I would send you a month's worth of work. I'm just not ready to do that. Uh, I share with the community as much as I can, but uh, I got a lot of time and effort investing. Hope you understand, and I appreciate your viewing, your comments. All, I appreciate all the comments and the thumbs up. You guys take care, and I'll see you in the next video.